forest industry is highly variable. It is a dangerous industry. It's a different environment that can change by the hour. You get rain, you get wind, you get snow. The block changes as you go from higher elevation down to lower elevation. So it's, it's always changing. Everything's changing from weather to equipment to your sites. Very remote sometimes. In the situations we're in, 911 isn't an option to call. We want to make sure that we have contractors working for us that have a good evac plan. An ERP shouldn't just be a checkbox that you've annually have done it. Click. The good ERP is they've been well thought out from the start. So they look at, okay, where are the crews? Where are they operating? What are the challenges to get to them? What are the hazards they're exposed to? What kind of first aid are we going to use? So they've really gone through it methodically and figured it out and they have those plan Bs. Plus they've practiced it. Doing ERP drills is a good way to make sure that you can get a patient to the hospital within that golden hour, which could make the difference. ERP can have lots of holes in it. Just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean it's gonna work. You need to test it. It's all about efficiency and time. Practice makes perfect. We'd like to go over our ERP plan. We get a drill together to test out our ERP, make sure everything's working properly and that it's actually going to work if, if we need it. What do you think about bringing a helicopter and doing a drill on site with all the guys and Evan as a first aid attendant? So bring the helicopter right out to the site and package and yeah. put it into the helicopter. Oh, that's awesome. My thoughts were we could do two drills with the helicopter, maybe pack a guy, package him and pack him off to the road, load him in the chopper mm -hmm. and fly him out. Right. And then maybe a second one to do a long line. I don't think many people have done that before. Yeah. But it's definitely a possibility in the grounds we work in. We never really get to practice on those at all. No, me neither. So I think it'd be a good opportunity for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Because every time you do something like that, there's always so many learnings that you, yep. you, you get out of it. And to make sure the ERP actually works. Yeah. I think maybe the first step of the whole drill is comes down to communication, making sure we can when an incident happens that we have the right sources to communicate with the outside to get a helicopter here. Right. Is that kind of in your ERP already? Like who makes the phone call and and then, so if it's calling the office through the radio, they know which company to call and then the different communications back and forth back to whoever's on site. Is that already there or that's something we got to figure out? No, that's all in place in the ERP plan now. Yeah. It's just something that I think would be good to practice. Oh, absolutely. For yeah, everybody. For sure. So I guess the the heli, the helicopter, the pilot, and they'll be going through with all the connections and where the stuff hooks up. Yeah, if we could go to the hangar and they could go through everything with us. Okay. And make sure we have the proper equipment to do the job. Yeah, yeah. And you guys are set up, your basket stretchers are set up for long lining if we have to. Yeah. When okay. you do a long line, you have to have certified people to do it. And they would come along with the helicopter company right. to the site. I guess we'll find that out when we talk with the, the pilots and go through that up at the base. I'm hoping that the crew will be able to see what it's actually like in real life. Lots of them probably haven't worked with helicopters before. So you've got a good approach for the helicopter? They always want tail rotor downhill, right? This has got to just enough a little bit of a hill if he lands. Yes, well, that's a good idea. Tomorrow we're going to take all our guys that are involved in the drill and all our equipment up to the 49 North hangar, talk to the pilots. We'll have all our stretchers and spine boards, first aid equipment out. It'll give us a chance to make sure it's compatible with the helicopters that we use. And for the first aid attendant, it'll make sure that he's keeping up on the things he needs to know and his equipment's properly taken care of. Yeah, that'll be a really good experience for us to just have a hands-on time in there. I think it'll better prepare us for the drill.
Thanks for coming this afternoon. This is uh, the helicopters that we're gonna be using most of the time in case of a medevac, in case of an extraction. There's uh, two different drills that we're gonna be doing, one with the stretcher, which is what we uh, mainly do. And then the other one, uh, when we cannot land or access or extract the individual, and we're gonna have to use this kind of device, a class D, and we'll have to ask Steve to help us uh, with the extraction. He's gonna show us a little bit more about the uh, flying stretcher and all the certified gear that we need to use in order to do a class D extraction. And then uh, I'll just show you. Time to time, we do uh, dry runs. Not everybody is uh, familiar with helicopter operations. Every single helicopter is slightly different. So then they can see a helicopter close up and then we can try to open and close doors properly and put stretchers and talk to the pilot on one on one. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, you guys gonna have the patient ready to go in that uh, spine board over here. And then um, as per the ERP, uh, you guys gonna call us and then uh, you'll make sure the, uh, the landing site is good, it's clear that we can come in and then land and shut down. So uh, as we can see here, um, you've got your spine board here, you've got uh, your big stretcher that you're gonna be using to carry the guy down, but only the spine board will be able to fit uh, inside the helicopter. We're gonna now uh, try to load up that uh, stretcher. So we'll need at least the assistance of four individuals, eh? And then maybe you can help me there. We're gonna lift that stretcher. When I bring it like this, usually the guy's head is over here, okay? And then you can go forward like this. The pilot will be assisting in the front over here and then he'll put the stretcher over there like this. And then once we've done this, we're gonna take the uh, seat belt off the aircraft stretcher like this. Yeah. And then we're just gonna buckle it this way here, okay? Okay. And then we have one over here, and then we have one by the feet, okay? Okay. And just like this, and then after we'll tighten that up a little bit, and this way the patient will be nice and secured in the aircraft, okay? Alrighty. It was great practice for everybody to see that type of helicopter and how the spine board actually goes into the helicopter. And I'm gonna grab it like this, it's a little awkward, and then we're gonna guide it over here, and then just like this, we put the guy in here, okay? And then after that, again, we'll use the seat belt to secure the patient, but that will be the pilot responsibility to make sure the cabin is, is, is all nice and secure before we go flying, all right? To I think the helicopter it. part of it, it's something new to lots of us, almost all of us, never get a, opportunity to do something like that as a drill. So I think it'll really give us a better understanding for that type of emergency. Right on, okay, well, uh, if we need to do a class D extraction, we'll have a fellow like Steve or Jason, certified tech, and then he's gonna come with all his gear. So I will fly them in on the long line, drop them off right beside where you guys are, and then after that, uh, they're gonna assist you packing and making sure the patient is secured. And so for tomorrow, um, we're gonna, we can even use this one if we want. You'll have a subject in there on a spine board. You guys can do the first aid package. Just tell us what you, what the patient has, what basically if it's a spine board, they're in a basket stretcher, and then we can plan basically how to get that uh, patient out uh, the best way. So if it's class D, long line, or if we can actually put them in the machine and then fly them out. So if we can land, that's always plan A. That's always option A is like get them in the machine, get them out, the, out of the environment and then get them to the closest, most appropriate place. Um, if that's not an option, then there's a few extra steps and then you'll see this big red bag. Basically the basket goes into the bag, the bag gets wrapped up and this might be something that you'll help with. Uh, so there'll either be one or two techs um, but every time they'll delegate and they'll basically tell you what to do. Uh, the bag gets closed. It actually straps onto the basket stretcher. There's a bridle that wraps around it. And then all it is is one big steel carabiner that clips up top. Now this is really important. It's a normal steel carabiner. 
um, but it's flight rated. So it's been tested. It can't just be a regular steel beaner. It has to be this one here. So how do we tell if it's a flight rated carabiner? You'll see there's a serial number on the, on the side and this one, there's a, a blue tag on it. So when we do an extract and we'll do a full briefing uh, of this tomorrow and we'll, uh, when we talk about the plan is that normally it'll just be one tech and it'll be one extra person. As we basically clip into the line, the line gets tight, we lift off. Sometimes there's a possibility that, that this, basically this thing starts flying around and hitting trees. So your job is basically to just brace until you can't anymore and then we're out of the canopy. So uh, once we deal with the helicopter stuff, it's not your responsibility anymore. That falls onto the tech and then the tech communicates to the pilot. In the end, it's the pilot's last call. So they're in charge. If they don't like what's happening, they can call it at any time. And then we go to plan B, whatever plan B is. Do we contact the tech or is that all through you after we contact you to come out? That's a good question. You guys are signed up with teams, I presume. So usually if there is a need for uh, extraction, then uh, the first call should be through teams. But uh, if it's easier to call us first, you call us. And then if we need to have a, a, a class D extraction, we will be calling teams or uh, search and rescue, whoever is available. So we just need to let you know what we need. Yes, so they will be briefing you on all this and then we'll do a mock-up tomorrow. It's, uh, it's quite interesting actually. And I personally... We'll have a, another brief uh, tomorrow morning when we get there, we'll shut down and to make sure everybody knows what's going to happen in which order. So we'll, we'll go in the bush and then we'll uh, just put that in practice in a real environment, right? Um, where we would be landing on the logging road or in the bush. All right, well, uh, thanks guys for coming. I hope you uh, learned a few things and uh, are uh, going to do it all over again for real tomorrow. Yeah, I'm hoping everybody gets something that they can work with, whether they work for us or another company. It's all good stuff.